What's up, Astro Hazers? This is Nina Parks, live and direct from San Francisco, California. I know it's been a minute since we did an episode of Ask Nina, but here we are anyways. Uh, uh, 420 just passed, uh, which was a beautiful time for California. I know a lot of people felt that their 420 usage or their cannabis usage is well more well re received, um, and instead of being looked down on, there's a lot more jokes in the in the in a you know humor attached to people's cannabis use, uh, which is good. That's part of why we use cannabis as a medicine because it does it lightens the situation, and laughter is a great medicine. So before I start this episode of Ask Nina, I'm going to burn some, ce uh, some cedar, um, which is also another way to use a herbal smoke medicine. The smell of cedar uh, is a little bit more savory. Tiny bit of sweet, tiny bit of savory, not as a, a sweet smelling as the, um, as the Palo Santo I, I burned the last time, but with the with cedar, uh, it's for protection and I have been doing a lot of talking to investors and a lot of talking to landlords and so it's, it's different for me because we started off as a little delivery service that could and now we're trying to compete in this cannabis economy right and before I just had to keep up with with a few growers that I really really liked and it was just direct to me and I could get it direct to you just as long as everybody had a um, ID card, the little 215 uh, profit. Well, we were two, 215 compliant, meaning that we were a collective, and then uh, our patients had a um, medical card. But now it's a little bit different. The compliance is really heavy, and um, it's getting more corporate. And so I'm looking to protect my energy from the traditional corporate structure that doesn't really think too much about people more than it does think about a bottom line. Um, but I know for a fact that we can create businesses that um, are there to help create uh, financial freedom for people as well as think about the consumer as a human. So uh, that's where I'm at. Things have been really amazing and I'm looking forward to answering some of these questions. Um, we got right here <laughs> so one of the questions is uh, what is the role of a new business owner or an entrepreneur in this space in regards to policy slash reform what should we be doing well oh man it's hard right because a business owner to be a business owner be an entrepreneur it takes a lot of bandwidth of your of your brain you have to think you have to do a lot of planning a lot of team building um, knowing your financials, knowing where your uh, sources are coming from. So it's a lot of energy already. Um, so as an entrepreneur and as a business owner, um, if it's not you yourself, uh, pair up with somebody that uh, knows how to read regulation, right? Um, that way they can translate it to you and you guys can talk about how it would actually be implemented. Um, and if, it, if there is no uh, policy yet, then you it's definitely important to talk to somebody that knows how to write down policy because as citizens we have the ability to craft policy and present it to our um, present it to our legislators. It's got to figure out what can uh, possibly work for you. Um, it's really important uh, to know how to write a letter, right, because that's a really, really great way to put in writing what it is that you're asking for your regulators or re legislators to do. That letter would include um, your name, uh, what affiliation you have, whether it's your business or whether it's a collective of people. Uh, so uh, for me, sometimes it's on behalf of Mirage Medicinal, sometimes it's on behalf of um, Supernova Women, sometimes the letter's on behalf of the California Growers Association, and sometimes it's a uh, if I can get it all coordinated with all parties, sometimes it's signed by all of those parties. Collective letter writing is such a great way to show our legislators and um, and uh, lawmakers that we are united as a community and that we know exactly what it uh, 
we are asking for. So the collective letter itself, getting the, together the people that would uh, sign the letter, and then being able to definitively put out your talking points. If it's a policy that you do not agree with, um, it's always great to take the section that you do not agree with, cite it so that they know where to find it easily in the, in the policy, and then um, bullet point very easily where you um, are in disagreement with it, that policy. Um, so, um, for instance, if it is that um, people don't want um, a dispensary that is 500 feet away from um, a, a, a preschool, right? But you guys want um, to be able to push down um, like how far away it is from a school district, which might not be the best example because I know that it's really controversial, but these are like real controversial things, right? Uh, the great thing to be able to do is collectively find support of parents or even um, people that uh, have, a, have a stake in the, in the school and get them to show up and support you um, by writing a letter or um, being able to collect statistics right, on, um, on the how uh, youth use has actually gone down in a lot of places, um, like in Colorado, um, or that it hasn't grown at any exponential rate, like they assumed that it was going to grow just because there's new dispensaries in a neighborhood. It makes it so uh, the access to cannabis is actually, like, obviously placed in a, in a contained uh, environment and that there is a procedure that it takes for a person to go and buy it. So the access that young people used to have if people were standing on the street corner is a lot less of an, of an impact um, on the community than if they left it unregulated. Um, so that's just one example. But um, I think that's a very strong one that people should go look into and it uh, can help you guys a lot. Yeah. So uh, that's this uh, question for Ask Nina and uh, tune in again and I'll have another answer for you.